You can come into a symmetrical, relaxed position. And go ahead and spread out. And either close your eyes or take a soft gaze up towards the ceiling. Just take a moment to feel where you are, just settling into stillness. Perhaps slowing down from the pace of the rest of your day a little bit. You might tune into the places where your body is touching the floor just as a way of getting into your body, feeling grounded. And you can tune into the feeling of your breath, remembering that you are breathing, that you are alive. And just like beginning a meditation, we may set an intention to be present with what we are doing throughout this time together. Knowing that the practice of that will be noticing what you are paying attention to and that your mind will probably wander. And each time your mind wanders, just very lovingly inviting yourself back, coming back to feeling your breath, feeling where your body is right now. Hmm. You're welcome to keep your eyes closed or open them as it's useful for you throughout your practice. Let's begin by sliding arms overhead, stretching out long through your arms and legs, reaching through your fingers and your toes, and then interlace your fingers, press out through your palms, flex your feet. And then release, bring your right knee to your chest, give that knee a good squeeze in. You might even give it a little jiggle. as if you're pressing the air out of your lungs by hugging the knee in so close. Let's straighten the right leg up towards the ceiling, holding somewhere behind your leg. Flex and point your foot a few times. Circle your ankle a couple times, both directions. Bend your knee in, open your knee out to the right, and straighten part way or all the way out to the side, grounding down through the back of the left leg. Let's release, bend the knee, bring it all the way across, spinal twist. Open out through the right arm, let your knee and shoulder reach away from one another. Each shape is a whole new world of sensation, feeling what's here, being curious about it. Staying in your twist, try straightening your right leg on a low diagonal, right arm on a high diagonal. And then 
release, roll back onto your back. Bring both knees in. And take a little circle or rock with your knees, massaging the lower back and sacrum into the floor. <sighs> Grab hold of just the left knee. Drop the right leg long, squeeze this knee in close. Straighten your left leg up towards the ceiling, going right to your edge, not beyond. Flex and point. Circle your ankle. Both directions. Bend your knee in, open your knee out to the left. And straighten part way or all the way out to the side, grounding down through the back of your right leg. And then release, bend your knee, bring it across, spinal twist. First with a bent knee. And then try straightening the left leg on a low diagonal, the left arm on a high diagonal. Roll back onto your back. Bring both knees in again. A little circle or rock, evening out your torso, a little massage for the lower back. Let's drop the feet to the floor and get set up for some core work. Engaging the abdominals. And trying to find ease, even while you're doing something that may be intense somewhere, can there be ease in general? Interlace fingers behind your head. Exhale, lift head and chest up. Inhale, release down. Exhale up. Inhale down. Up and down. Up and down. Up and down. Let's take two more. Last one. Release and then send the right leg up to the ceiling. Exhale, head up towards your leg. Inhale, head down. Up and down. Up and down. Up and down. Let's take two more like this. Last one. And then switch, left leg high. Exhale, head up. Inhale, head down. Up and down. Up and down. Up and down. One more on this side. And then switch again, right leg high. This time take the left arm across. Each time you exhale, reach a little further across, trying not to use too much momentum or arm strength, really initiating the movement from the abdominals. Let's take one more. And then switch. Left leg high, right arm across. Take one more on the side. Release, stretch long. Bring your knees back in. And then make your way up to sitting. And let's come all the way into a high push-up position. 
<clears throat> Spreading fingers if hands are flat. If you're protecting your wrists, you can also do this on your forearm or on knuckles. Taking a moment here to feel the strength of your core supporting you, the whole underside lifting up, keeping that engaged and strong as you lower down, shifting weight forward, and then come into your back bend. You can start as gently as you need to. If you're working with pain or injury, go even slower with each thing that touches that. We each probably have a memory of these poses, what it felt like last time, how we remember doing it. You can use that, but let the real-time feedback inform what you're doing now. And then back to down dog when you're ready. You might move or explore, perhaps pedaling out your feet or Letting your hips shift side to side. Even in stillness, you could let your attention travel through your body. What are you feeling in each part? And using what you feel combined with what you know to take really good care of yourself. Let's drop the knees and sink back to child's pose, releasing hips to the heels, forehead to the floor, practicing resting. Hmm. And resting can be a really important part of this practice. Do it whenever you need to, whether it's when I'm suggesting it or different times in this pose or a different pose. With arms out in front of you, walk your hands over to the left and then pull back through your right hip, stretching right side a little more. Come through center and over to the other side. Pull back through your left hip, stretching left side a bit more. Come through center, back up through table, back through down dog, and then walk your hands and feet towards one another, and we'll hang in ragdoll. You can bend your knees a little or a lot. You can take any arm position, feeling how gravity can assist you here, allowing the weight of your head to hang. Hmm. What have you been holding on to that you're ready to let go of now? And bend your knees a little more and slowly roll up, coming all the way up to standing. We'll step up to the front of the mat, coming into mountain pose, Tadasana. And bring hands together at the heart. Imagine drawing energy up from the earth all the way up past the top of the head. And we'll take a full A-series sun salutation. Next inhale, arms sweep high. Exhale, fold forward, swan dive down. Inhale, lengthen. Step or hop your feet back, coming through high push-up, lower down, chaturanga. Up dog or cobra, and back to down dog. 
please take the time you need for all your transitions and then settle into a good rest, whether that's down dog, child's pose, sitting, something else. Five deep breaths. Last one here. Come back through down dog and step or hop your feet forward, inhaling flat back. Exhale, fold, let your head release fully. Inhale, back up to standing. Exhale, arms press down. Again, inhale, arms high. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Step or hop your feet back, lower down. Up dog or cobra. Back to down dog. This time from down dog, <coughs> when you're ready, take your right leg up, bend your knee to your chest, and start circling this bent right knee. Exploring the full range of motion for this hip joint and just taking in everything that's being stirred up. All the sensation, whatever you're noticing, and take care of yourself. If this would work better from hands and knees, do that, or from forearms, do that. Next time your leg is up, reach it straight, send it a little higher, and then bring your right knee towards right upper arm. Extend it up and back. Take it across towards left upper arm. Reach it up and back. Now right towards the center of your chest. Extend it up and back. Big step forward. High lunge. Inhale, arms up. Sink low, settle in. Grab your left wrist, take it over for a side bend. Come over to the other side, grab your right wrist, take it over. And back to center. Interlace fingers behind your back. Lift the chest. Feel your feet grounded, hips dropping. Release arms up. Tip forward, standing splits, hands to the floor or to a couple of blocks. We'll do this with hips square. And with the upper body letting go, just like ragdoll, let your head hang, let your neck release, stretching that left leg straighter, longer, higher. Mm. Last breath here. Step back. Warrior one, drop the back heel, inhale, arms up. Hundred percent effort. Going towards full self-expression doesn't ever end, so it just gets more subtle. With all that effort, can there still be ease? Last breath here. Release, make your way to down dog through whatever movement transition works for you. Could be a vinyasa, could be just stepping back, could add your own movement. From down dog, when you're ready, left leg sweeps up. Bend your knee in, start circling this bent left knee. And 
Next time your leg is up, reach it straight. And then bring your left knee towards left upper arm. Reach it up and back. Take it across towards right upper arm. Send it up and back. And right towards the center of your chest. Extend it up and back. Big step forward. High lunge. Arms up. Saddle in, sink low. Grab the right wrist, take it over. Come over to the other side. Back to center. Interlace fingers behind your back. Other thumb on top this time. How much can you take in when the pose is complex? Maybe you can't take it all in. What are you able to feel? One more breath here. Arms up. Tip forward, standing splits. Can there be intensity, effort, a lot of sensation, and a feeling of surrender at the same time? Last breath here. Step back. Warrior one. Mm. Last breath. Release. Make your way to down dog through your movement transition. And then settle into a good rest, whether that's down dog, child's pose, sitting, something else. Much more important than the shape, coming back to a quality. Last breath here. Let's come back through down dog and step or hop your feet forward. Inhaling flat back. Exhale fold. Inhale up to standing. Exhale arms press down. Let's take just the right arm up as we inhale. Exhale over to a side bend, staying really open through the torso, reaching through the fingers. Feel how that can connect through the whole side. Reach a little further out to come up and release down. Same thing, other side. Big yawning reach. Reach a little further out to come up and release down. Let's interlace fingers, press out through the palms. Take your arms up by your ears, shoulders drop, arms reach straight, and then rise up onto your toes for a little balance. That could be just a slight lift of the heels. You might come all the way up. Feeling right where you are. Can there be ease here, even as you might be wobbling or falling? Start to fold forward, staying in balance on the toes. You can bring your hands to your legs wherever they meet. Might be the upper leg, some of you might reach lower. You could bend your knees so you're not overstretching your hamstrings. Mm. 
And then release, drop the hands, drop the heels, drop your head. Let's bend the knees and come into chair, Utkatasana. Hips go low, head reaches high, shoulders go low, fingers reach high. What's going up? What's going down? One more breath. Release, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen. Step or hop your feet back, lower down. Up dog or cobra. And back to down dog. Right leg sweeps up. Step forward, high lunge. Arms up. Warrior three, shift forward. Find your balance and modify or adjust how you need to. Can you prioritize that hips are square and that your torso and your back leg form a straight line and then you can choose to have the supporting leg bent or straight. Torso might be parallel to the floor, but it could also be much higher. Any arm position. Last breath here. Step back, warrior one. Just one breath and then find your way to down dog. Hmm. Taking your time. When you're ready, left leg sweeps up. Step forward, high lunge. Arms up. Hmm. Warrior three. using everything you know about your body and the feedback you're getting right now to come into your full expression. Moment by moment, it may change. Last breath here, step back. Warrior one, just one breath, release. Make your way to a good rest. Come back to breath, come back to presence. Last breath here. Let's come back through down dog and step or hop your feet forward. Inhaling flat back. Exhale fold. Bend your knees, arms up, inhale chair. Exhale straighten. Again, inhale chair. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Step or hop back. Lower down. Up dog or cobra. And back to down dog. Right leg sweeps up when you're ready. Step forward, high lunge. Arms up. Warrior three, one breath, come in. Step right back to warrior one. Open out warrior two. Flip the right palm to face the ceiling. Reverse warrior two. Straighten the front leg, triangle. And then open the top arm, tuck it behind your back, half bound triangle. So it could be that the back of your hand is at your lower back. You might creep it around towards your right inner thigh. If you wanna add a little core strength, you could extend your bottom arm following the line of your torso. Warrior 
Last breath here. Bend the front knee. Half bound extended side angle. If you want to take a full bind or a different variation, you are welcome. Feeling wherever you are choosing to be. One more breath here. Release, hands to the floor, step up. Half moon, Ardha Chandrasana, open through the top hip. When you're ready, extend the left arm high. Last breath here. Release, make your way to down dog. Take your time. Part of your movement transition may be integrating what you've just done. Noticing difference on the two sides. <sighs> Reestablishing your breath. From down dog, when you're ready, left leg sweeps up. Step forward, high lunge. Arms up. Warrior three, one breath. Step back, warrior one. Open out, warrior two. Flip the left palm, reverse warrior. Straighten the front leg, triangle. Open the top arm. Tuck it behind your back and you're working with your body. You don't need to have more mobility or go any deeper than feels right for you. Taking something similar to what you did on the other side. So if you did extend the bottom arm, you can do that again. Release, bend the left knee, half bound, extended side angle. If you did take a different variation on the other side, do so again, maybe a full bind, maybe took a different arm variation. Last breath. Release, hands to the floor. Step up, half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. Separating the effort of you going towards your full expression from the results. Letting it be just like it is, however it feels, however it looks. Last breath here. Release, make your way to down dog. Consciously. Taking a few breaths in some neutral shape whether that's down dog, child's pose, sitting, or something else. And then let's come into a pigeon pose, right side. You might come through down dog. Bring the right knee forward, scoot back through the left leg, help the hips get as low as they'll go, set up support if support is useful, something under the hips or chest. 
or forehead. Slow, steady breath, no matter what. One way to view this practice is uh, that we are taking an hour or however much time to focus on being present and at ease. And then each pose is just a challenge to that. Can I be present and at ease while I'm doing this? Bring the upper body back up. If you have something under your right hip, slide it out of your way so you can lean to the right and let's slide the left knee forward, getting set up for half hero on the left side. So left knee points straight to the front of the mat, left toes straight to the back of the mat. Feel free to sit up on something or add padding under your ankle. Lean back onto the hands, pick up the hips, tuck the tail, and then place the hips back down with the tail tucked, so we're opening the front of the left hip. And you can stay here on two hands. You might explore coming lower to one elbow, two elbows, all the way back. If at any point it's too much, come back up. If you want to go deeper, go lower. And if this is not working for you, you can always come out of it. You might do a quad stretch lying on your side and just holding your foot instead of leaning onto it. Keep tucking the tail, inviting the stretch into the hip flexor and quad and out of the lower back. release, let's lean to the right. Straighten that left leg out and give a little rub to the knee or ankle, working out any tightness from that last pose. And we'll fold over this straight left leg. So right sole the foot to the left inner thigh. Janu Shirshasana can orient the center of the torso over the center of the leg and use your hands to support you. So that could be hands around some kind of strap-like thing, hands on your feet, hands on the floor, some combination. Lengthen and fold whatever amount you're able, feeling what's here for you. Inhale to look up. Exhale, release. Make your way to down dog. So you might take a vinyasa. That could be a way to integrate what you've just done. You might just step back or some other movement. Getting ready for a pigeon pose on the left side, taking the time you need. <sighs> When you're ready, left knee comes forward. Scoot back through the right leg. Add support if support is useful.
Let's bring the upper body back up. Take your time. If you have something under your left hip, move it out of your way so you can lean to the left. Slide the right knee forward, setting up for half hero. Finding how this works for you. Some bodies need a lot of propping under the hips or padding under the ankle. And for some bodies, nothing's going to have it work. So exploring to find how this works, does this work. Tuck the tail to bring the sensation into the hip flexor and quad out of the lower back. You can find the amount of going down or staying up that keeps it in the sweet spot. Stretch in the hip flexor and quad, no pain in the knee, no pain in the lower back. Release, let's lean to the left, straighten the right leg, maybe a little rub to the knee or ankle. Hmm. Set up for Janushirshasana, left sole of the foot at the right inner thigh, orient the center of the torso over the center of the right leg, folding forward. Hmm. As you fold, can you keep the shoulders down, away from the ears? Very carefully playing your edge. If at any moment it's too much, how do you back off just enough so you're back at your edge, not beyond it? If something opens up, do you want to move into that space, go a little deeper? to look up. Exhale, release. Maybe one last vinyasa. Maybe you're ready to come right back onto your back. We will eventually meet up on our backs. You can take whatever movement you like on your way to getting there. We are moving towards the end of class and there's plenty of time for you to get in any last pose or stretch or something you're craving now. So you might take some back bends, you might take an inversion, you might take a restorative pose. Can you trust your body to know what you need? If you can't, just practice asking. Whatever you're doing now, feeling that fully. When it feels complete, come to a resting pose. And just ask again what's needed now. No right or wrong. If you have more of an active practice to get in, keep going. <sighs> if you are ready to rest, 
You can start getting as comfortable as possible for your final resting pose, Shavasana. If there's anything you want to do to adjust your clothing, your props, self-massage, anything that's going to help you let go. Eventually settling into stillness, but please take the time you need. Once you do settle into your final rest, you can let go of all the effort. Let go of the control of your breath. Let go of holding your body. Just let it release. Slowly begin to wiggle your fingers and toes. <sighs> Gently increasing movement through your body, waking yourself up. <clears throat> you might take a big stretch out through your arms and legs. When you're ready, bring your knees in. Roll to one side. And use your hands to help you up to sitting. And we'll bring hands together at the heart. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me today.